beautiful artists and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so this week, it's still winter, but we're looking forward to spring, looking forward to Valentine's Day. I have a really sweet little bee painting with a romantic twist. Uh, that's gonna be super simple, and I have my three standard brushes that I use in most paintings for this painting today, which is my large square wash brush, a medium size pointed sable brush, and a small, small-ish detail brush. Gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a full materials list, go ahead and check the description box below. It'll show you everything you need to paint along. The colors that I'm going to start with for today's background step, I have a fair amount of white, a bright cobalt blue, a little bit of violet purple there, some cadmium red, and some cadmium yellow. Let's go ahead and jump in with our biggest brushes here our big square brush. And we are gonna be doing the beautiful sort of morning sky is sort of what I was feeling here with this. And really soft colors. I'm gonna start with my yellow. Very heavy on the white. Just a little bit of yellow snuck on in there. And a little bit of water also added to the paint, especially with this background step getting that paint to soak into the canvas texture. Okay, put a little bit of light yellow and then I threw some more white right on top and I'm really moving my brush around here, getting some good texture and just filling in this whole right hand corner right here. And now I'm gonna go over into this left hand corner with an equally light purple, very light color here. If your yellow was very vibrant, it's possible that when you're using your purple, if you didn't wash your brush in between, that you'll get a brown. So you can wash your brush in between. Mine was so light though, that it almost didn't matter. Okay, very light purple over here too. I just love how soft that looks. Very pretty morning glow of the sunrise. We have beautiful sunrises here. Love those winter sunrises. Okay, that's looking very pretty. Little tiny bit of pink now. Again, very pastel. Look at how pretty that color is. And maybe just sort of dead center. This background reminds me of my Make-A-Wish painting with the Dandelion Silhouette, which is one of my most popular paintings, both teaching in person and here on YouTube. Okay, I think a little bit more pigment of yellow down in this corner, kind of building up those layers. Very nice. And this is you know, you get to play around and make your own personalized background. It can be really whatever colors that you like it to be. We're just doing very light colors and just kind of getting in that sunrise vibe. But you could do a sunset painting too if you wanted. Okay, and using just a little bit of light blue now as well up here in the sky. Very pretty. A little bit more water on my brush, a little bit more white on my brush. You don't want to over blend these colors because if you bring that blue too far into, especially your yellow, you're going to get some green there. Same idea over here. You'll blend with your red, get a little bit of purple, but that's not quite a problem. We do kind of want to avoid the over blending into green over here though. Gotta keep that yellow nice and clean and bright. Okay, and you can 
Add any other final touches that you'd like to your background. Once you have that first layer, sometimes it's fun to kind of go back and add some like deliberate brush strokes of a more pigmented color. Very pretty. I think maybe even a little bit more of this pigmented pink over here into my yellow. So pretty. Nice soft colors all filled in. And once you like your background, you can go ahead and step away and let this dry. And we will come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and fresh colors on the piece of palette paper here. So again, I have some white, just a small amount of black. Got a little bit of my favorite phthalo green, some more violet and some yellow. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it. I'm gonna use my medium sized brush here for these First a uh, few brush strokes here for our little uh, lavender patch is what we're gonna start with here for the foreground step. So I'm gonna mix up a beautiful green with just taking my phthalo green here and mixing in some yellow to sort of neutralize that blue that's in that turquoise color. Little bit of water always into the paint. All right, loading that paint up into the brush bristles. And very delicately here, I'm going to do a few brush strokes that are going to be blades of grass. Just like so. And these are gonna be sort of like the biggest ones. You can downgrade brush sizes if you feel like you need a little bit more control. I'm going to bring that brush in in just a minute. And you could do as many of these big stems as you'd like. I think I will go ahead and bring in the smaller one already. And these are gonna be the stocks for the lavender. So they're going to be pretty tall and then also have some leaves that sort of come up adjacent real close. Don't want it to look too cactusy. But the leaves grow real close here to the stalk. Okay, looks good. These are those main lavender stalks. Let's do a few more in between. A little bit more water here. And you can even have them sort of crisscross each other like so. Some of these might have the leaves and some might just be little stalks that have not bloomed yet. All right, like a little, or even blades of grass, like a little patch of grass, like so, with some thin brush strokes as well. Filling in that whole little patchy area. Very nice. Okay, I think I need a little bit more green. All right, I think this one should be a little bit longer, a little bit more graceful of an end there. Probably on all of those. Looking a little better. Very nice. And just a couple more. To have a cute little lavender patch. Just 
super adorable. Maybe some leaves on this guy too. Do some lavender there. Going right off the canvas. Just like so. Oh, looking pretty good. All right. One more little one. Okay, that looks pretty cute. Well, we're gonna go with it. All right. Let's do the lavender blossoms now. We're gonna have a clean brush and we're gonna be going in with some purple. And I think I'll just take a little bit of white to start with, but just a tiny touch. So it's still pretty vibrant purple. Just a tiny bit of white to help with that opacity. And I'm going to go to the top of these stalks here and you might blend into your green a little bit because you want to go right on top of the green as well, but you'll just do a brush stroke and then clean your brush off after the ones that you'll do on top of the green there. And then building little brush strokes on top of each other up here in a sort of cylindrical shape like so, okay? Little lavender flowers. Very cute. This one's going to be going right off the edge there. And then just a little bit further down the stalk. Okay. And some of these you're going to leave alone. So you're not going to add flowers to every single stalk because some of these haven't bloomed yet. And then this is also sort of like also commingled with grass in our little wild garden. Okay, but maybe some of these are starting to bloom. Maybe just a couple little blossoms like so. And this is also going to look totally unique to your painting. It's, you know, each stalk doesn't need to be lean in the same way or well, you can loosen up a little bit with it and just go with the creative flow. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Where else should we add some beautiful flowers? How about right there? A couple small ones, just like so. Very pretty. I think a little small one right here as well. It's definitely needed. Like so, look at how cute. Very nice. You go a little bit further down over here. You can sort of adjust your garden as needed. Looking good. And I got one more big one to add. A little bit more purple here. That's gonna be sort of our main guy. And we're gonna have our bee probably drinking the nectar from this guy. So sort of bring that up into the center of the composition. Just being very deliberate with each little tap of the brush. Okay, that's looking cute. Nice. That one up a tiny bit more. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and add our highlights now to our lovely little composition. It's very simple, this painting today. A little bit of highlight now. So I'm gonna grab some white, bring it over here to where I had a little bit of green in my yellow and I'm going to mix up a nice, very light yellowy green. And I'm gonna come in here and add little highlights on every little blade of grass. We don't need to go all the way throughout each blade, but we do wanna get a little bit of variation in the green. You should see a little bit of dark green still too. Very cute, kind of finessing that shape, if you will. Uh -oh, and 
getting rid of any sort of fuzziness as I go down as well. Every single blade of grass, being very patient. Looking super pretty. So simple to do this little lavender garden. Really cute. As much as I'm excited for spring, I love winter, so I'm almost like, don't bloom yet. <laughs> I'm still hibernating. <laughs> All right, gonna rinse my brush. And actually I see that I went a little too heavy handed here with my highlight. So I just wanna refine that shade real quick. Okay, perfect, super cute. Now clean brush. Same small brush. With my white, I'm gonna go right into my purple and your purple should still be wet. If it's not, you might wanna come in with a little bit of like a light purple instead because you want it to sort of blend with the purple. Look at how pretty. We're doing that wet on wet blending today. Just kind of blending it, but also leaving a little bit of purple still underneath. Okay, again, every brush stroke matters. Okay, looking very nice. Might need to clean your brush off if things just get a little bit too pastel. So you want to have that nice white contrast with the dark purple, very pretty. All right, just little highlights on each blossom. That looks great. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our B, which is our final step here of today's painting. Super simple, super cute. I'm going to try to find some clean yellow. <laughs> Don't need too much bring it over here by my white in preparation and just gonna mix that yellow with white for a little bit more opacity that looks perfect and I'm actually going to do my B shape with yellow because black is a lot easier to put onto yellow than yellow is onto black <laughs> so let's go right up here near our sort of center flower and just do a little oval with yellow and just get that filled in with yellow as well. Just like so. Perfect. Little floating Easter egg there of a bee. <laughs> okay, and now we're gonna put the black right on top of the yellow and it might blend a little bit, um, but black has such good coverage power you should still be able to get a nice solid black. So we're gonna go here in the front part of our bee, which is like his little face, and then also his little bee butt. So cute, adorable. See how that black just goes right over that yellow. like so and then we'll do a little straight down the middle as well adorable let's grab a tiny bit of white to put on the top here of his little bee butt and his little bee face super cute okay now this part very 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 small lines I'm going to kind of spin my brush here damp brush just to make sure that it's as fine of a point as I can make it. And then I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna come right underneath Mr. B here. Do a quick shadow there. And then two little legs. Very, very, very faint lines here. Just like so, kind of pointing backwards. And then two little antenna 
on the top of his little head. Look at how adorable he is. Okay, just going to take a little bit of black right along the outside edge here because I see a little yellow poking through still. And just right along the top too, just to sort of refine that shape really quick. Okay, now I know he doesn't have any wings, but we're gonna let that be for just a second. <laughs> let that be, <laughs> get it? Uh, we're gonna add those in just a minute. Just gonna give those colors a second to dry. Let's go ahead and just use that same tiny brush. And from his little bee butt, we're gonna do a little buzz trail. Okay, we don't wanna go like right in the center of his little butt because you don't want to make it look like bee poop. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, but um, we want it to maybe look more like it's coming from his wings. Okay, so we're gonna just go little dashes there and come down a little bit. And then we're gonna loop around and the cute part here is that we're gonna make a little heart. Okay, so it's gonna come down like so. And then up and around. Okay. Super cute. And just kind of buzzing off the side of the canvas here. So adorable. And you do want the dash marks to be pretty visible because you want to see that heart shape. So I'm just going to come back over here and just thicken them up a little bit. But very cute. Okay, final step, you guys. Just gonna add some wings onto our adorable little bee. We're gonna do that with white. I rinsed my brush. And I'm gonna start with the background wing. Just gonna kinda attach going that direction. And then the foreground wing is gonna kinda attach to mid body. And you're probably gonna pull some wet paint through there. So you're gonna wanna rinse your brush to add the second brush stroke right next door for his little two-part wing. Super cute. All right, I think I'm gonna take that up just a little bit farther. Make sure you don't get a drip like I almost just did. <laughs> okay, I want him to have pretty good sized little wings. Like so. All right. Any little final touches that you like on your adorable bee painting, but that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. If you painted along today, I would love to see your work. I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club that's designed for my students to do just that. Uh, we would love to have you join us over there. There's a link in the description box below to join. And that is all I have for us this week. So thank you so much for painting along. And until next time, stay creative.